right. those of you who are happy, we're not talking to you. Anyone who's offended, we, we asked you to turn off the video now. <laughs> because what's happening right now is we're going to talk about what is imprisoning, enslaving, and diminishing all the rest of us. And we need to transmute that relationship. And it comes down to us. We have allowed it. We have permitted it. It is our responsibility to change it at whatever level you're feeling the pain. Wherever your, as Tavares says, your pain point is. Yes. Welcome to Call for the Truth. We are happy to see you back today. We're going to continue our conversation about transmutation of relationships. Today, we're going to be talking about all kinds of relationships and where they'll go. I am Lota of the Sun, and this is Tavares of the Sun. And we'd first like to invite you to join us to call for the truth. And I invite everyone who is chiming in. Shall we call for the frequency of truth to come forth? Shall we call to see the truth? speak the truth and hear the truth in all things. So as allowed to mention, we're talking about transmutation of our relationships, but primarily the belief systems within our relationships. And uh, yes. before we did this podcast, we had a lot of great examples that we like to cover. And, uh, you know, one of the things that inspired it was seeing how we still hold on and has, still have uh, these limiting beliefs about people or negative beliefs that, often fuel the negative emotions that we hold on to, like resentment, hatred, anger, uh, guilt. And of course, that stunts our evolution and our growth process. So uh, you want to kick us off with some, some thoughts and ideas uh, before we go into story time? Well, um, we can go into story time at any time. The, what I see in the, and what I think that we will all see in the coming time is that we are all confronted with experiences where we have an opportunity to grow beyond the concepts and the constraints that the third dimensional world has presented us with, that we were born into, our relationships with our authority figures, our relationships with our doctors, our relationships with our lawyers, our relationship with our Indian chiefs, the idea of how we experience uh, who we are in relationship to who we think they are and how some of these need to be upgraded and transmuted so that we can grow into um, those who have take more responsibility for their own experience and therefore have better and greater experiences. So one of the ones that really stands out to me is our relationship with our government. I have noticed in more recently than previously in the last five years, that the relationship that my government is having with me is one of parent and child, where I'm not the parent, where I'm the child, and I'm being told what to do as if I have just been born and don't know what to do. And I'm, this is a relationship that I would like to shift and change into one of mutual respect and growth. So this is one of those relationships where I'm transmuting old thoughts. I was sent to schools where I was taught to keep my head down and pay attention and obey and don't make waves and, you know, don't speak out of turn and don't be out of order and then you'll be blessed. But I have found that um, that leads to abuse and aggression and people um, not stopping the aggression, continuing to push you further and then um, sometimes you end up damaged as a result of that kind of behavior. And then it also um, escalates in all other areas of your life. So a doctor tells you behave a certain way. And if you don't, then you're going to have to sign this document and then you won't have our protection or you won't have our support or something like that happens with any other authority experience in your life. And especially with our religions, uh, the, the world religions that everyone is in, some of them are more loosely connected and some of them more strict. How is it that we're interacting with that? How do we feel about that? 
So that's what I want to kick it off with. Yeah, I like that, especially that government idea. You know, I was chuckling a bit, trying to hold back my laughter. And when you were saying this parent-child relationship, and I'm like, oh, no more of that big daddy USA, huh? No more of that. <laughs> Uncle Sam. Yeah, right? And everybody know about those uncles. <laughs> Watch out for the muggles. So, uh, that Uncle Sam uh, is very interesting that that, that is uh, what has been given to us. This is family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's not your daddy, but now it's more your daddy. But the family <laughs> is irresponsible. They don't know how to spend money. They don't know how to save. They're like, what happened to the money? I don't know. I, I wish I could tell you. I don't, I don't know. We sent it somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> we sent it to our other family members somewhere else. But isn't that like the ultimate do as I say, not as I do? <laughs> so, clearly, this is a belief system that is detrimental to uh, all of society, all communities, all aspects of uh, citizens in the U.S. We have bought into a lot of things. It is not... It is not one thing. It is a way of looking at the world through the lens of everyone is greater than you and you are nothing. You are the person who must be compliant and obedient. Otherwise, things won't go well for you. And we can see that that has in history. Historically, we see that if you don't keep your head down, if you make too much noise, if you misbehave, it will not go well for you. I'm over here. Like, make noise, get loud, do something, say something. And it is our responsibility to make sure that what doesn't work for us, we stop making it, trying to make that round peg fit into that square hole and continue to do what um, others have done before us who were not in this time of expansion. Yeah. We are in a time of expansion and growth that we can choose to understand that we can have more. We can have better representation of ourselves through all areas in our schools. Are we being represented properly in our schools, in our districts? Are we being represented properly in our doctor's offices? Are we being treated? You know, you get your five minutes with the doctor in the room and then they leave because they have to get to that next patient. Is that appropriate? Is that the way that life should be for us? Is no. that the experience we're supposed to have? Fast food, burger type medical. You drive up to the, the window and you get five minutes. And then the nurse brings him in. You, he looks at the chart. You get your five minutes and you keep on going. And you get your burger and your fries and the shake that everybody else gets. <laughs> it's interesting to see this. all the systems are the same. All the templates. systems are the same. It's the same templates. And we are the same. It is not anyone's fault except our own if we don't change our experience. We can start with our, our families. We can start with our uh, parents. We can start with our schools. We can start with our faith-based experiences. Are you satisfied with any of that? If you are, good. Then you are. We're going to move you to the approved aisle. Now, all the ones who are not feeling good about what goes on, you can be in this aisle and we'll talk about that. That's right. Those of you who are happy, we're not talking to you. Anyone who's offended, we, it, it, we asked you to turn off the video now <laughs> because <laughs> what's happening right now is we're going to talk about what is imprisoning, enslaving, and diminishing all the rest of us. And we need to transmute that relationship. And it comes down to us. We have allowed it. We have permitted it. It is our responsibility to change it. At whatever level you're feeling the pain, wherever your, as Tavara says, your pain point is. Yes. So speaking of pain point, I uh, want to go back a little bit when you were speaking about this idea of authority and the belief system and giving too much power. So the conversation we were having prior to recording we had our camera lady and she was talking, hey, camera lady. <laughs> she was talking about how uh, she was conditioned at an early age, as many of us were, to give all this power to authority figures where when she was telling the story, I'm listening to her and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so damaging, what you mentioned. You know, how this that process of giving all your power away, there's some damage that's done that people don't often see. And what I saw was how the, the inner voice that we have of truth that's innate within all of us. I, I could see it continuing to be stacked and layered and accumulated and suppressed where like 
you don't believe yourself, you can't trust yourself, and we can barely hear the voice of truth that arises within us because we don't gave all of our power to an outside source, which in most cases are projecting, uh, to go off just a tad bit, uh, I was thinking about my experiences growing up where there was so much projection onto me from others. You're going to be this when you grow up. You're going to be that. Or you should, da 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 because they saw something that was probably a great skill set, but that wasn't the truth of my soul, you know, or what was destined in, within my purpose. But, you know, this is, again, how we're influenced because we, oh, they're right, and we go against the better judgment and knowing this. Yes. I think this is a universal experience. Yeah. I had it, I mean, sure, you had it five years ago, 10 years ago. I may have had it 40 or 50 yeah, years ago. Yeah, we burn stuff down. Now, heretics <laughs> like, ah, with a kerosene, with a match. Burn it down. So the, I think the thing to really see in this is that when you're taught to revere and to idolize and to listen to those who represent authority over you, there's an unseen aspect that is that you should be small so that they may be big. Ooh. So, however, you being small does not make them bigger or better or smarter or right. <laughs> it looks like just a, a relative distorted perspective. Yes, but then it leaves you still small. Yeah. You know, they no, they have not grown in their effectiveness or their uh, clarity or their truth, but now you have made yourself small and... When the equation moves on, you're still small. They may or may not have impacted, but you have made yourself, you have imprinted yourself, you have taken a vow to yourself. Let me be in humble, you know, uh, respect of the greatness of another, whether it's because of the faith or the government or the military or the police, whatever it is. Maybe it's your parents. Like they are so revered because they have achieved so much. They were, they worked for the best. They got the most they did. And so now I am, I am the nothing that, you know, must bow down to the greatness. This is, um, this is a lie. This is not who we are. We are divine beings who deserve honor, respect, and gratitude. We should be taught that and it should be reciprocal. There is no circumstance in which those of us who are our other selves, we are each other, we are all one. There's no dynamic in which you can be so much greater and I be so much less and we all be one. That is an illusion that is supported by the ones who are on the bottom. You know, it is the ones on the, the bowing down like, oh, you are so great, I can't look at you. You have the eyes of, you know, the stars I can't see, I can't see into the sun, the face of your son. You know, I am so nothing. I won't even look. I have to look. I have to avert my eyes because of your greatness. So like, ah, stop <laughs> it. Stand up. <laughs> Be strong. So what, what would you recommend to these people who are who find themselves like, yeah, that's me. I relate to that. I want to erect myself and essentially change and dismantle these limiting belief systems. We must see in ourselves the greatness that we see and admire in others. We must be willing to look them in the eye, to stand up straight and toe to toe and thank them for whatever it is that they're giving to us, government, doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, whatever you've got, thank you. I'm an honor of, of it. Now that you have come before me and done it, will you teach me to have whatever aspect of this that is appropriate for me to have so that I may also be great. Is the dynamic that there can only be 1% that's great and 99% that's not? Or is it that we may be increased, all of us, whether it looks the same in every dynamic or not? If, I, um, if the person who's talking to the person who's bowing down says, stand up, you are greater than that, what has changed? So we need to be the person who's willing to say, uh, I, I admire what you're saying, and I have a thought too. And you're not shouted down. You're not said, well, go stand in line or wait on the call for four hours until I answer because you're irrelevant. Everything about the way we're treated 
is irrelevant, whether it's um, business or government or try calling somebody to get a person on the phone <laughs> and see how many hours you're on hold so they can let you know what they think of you. Like, I, I see what you think of me. It's been 32 minutes <laughs> for me to call my bank to find out about my money. <laughs> 32 minutes. I see what you think of me. <laughs> you know, it's clear. So we have to not be in agreement with, we can't be like, oh, that's just the way it is. We have to be like, let's change this. Let's make a system where we can get the things that are appropriate for us to get and be treated appropriately. There's enough people walking around doing nothing that could be answering phones. You know, so there's that. That's how I, that's my response to that is that it, it is incumbent upon all of us who are not the 1% to make sure that we get the percentage we're supposed to have. And that if we rely on, you know, he's the richest one, he's got the most money, he makes the most AI, he's got the biggest cars, he's got, you know, it's all, that's all fine, but where's the part that he's in humanity with you? Where's that part? Where's the part of, is he using that to help make you greater? Are you, do you want that or do you want to be, do you want to just look up to someone else and? Give them the responsibility for all things. Sovereignty is a solution. Be the power in your own experience. Then you can meet the power in an experience eye to eye in respect and honor and gratitude. Introductory energetic clearing. This shamanic clearing specifically targets addictions, negative thought forms, anger spheres, and more. Of the Sun cleans and clears the primary things affecting our energetic body and gives us tools to support our healing journey. This service is priced perfectly for your regular energetic maintenance. Recommended use is once a month. For more information and sign up, visit ofthesun.com. Mm, there's a lot of oneness in that, you know, and, and the idea of responsibility, a lot of the key tenets and principles that we speak of and of the sun. The laws and principles of the universe, everything is one thing. Yeah. Everyone is your other self. They may not know it, but it's okay for you to tell them. Right. You know, like when somebody starts talking down to you, it's like, you know you're my other self, right? Right. Why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> yeah, like for oh, why? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really a thing. Yeah. All right. So we have several different topics. Uh, another one I like to talk about again with the dismantling of belief systems. Uh, kind of like within the family structure, when we're raised a certain type of way, we get a certain type of trauma, and uh, then there's this perception of the relationship dynamic. Um, one that specifically comes to mind, uh, I'm thinking about a client, but I also can see myself in this client where this client basically hates her mother, you know, and like we can see the level of abuse and it's always and taking cheap shots. And uh, it made me think about my, my experience and how I had resentment towards my mother. There, this was a belief system. I had a belief system about my mother that was fueling resentment. And it was sustaining it. It was so interesting to see it. And uh, it wasn't until I changed the belief system that I was able to release the resentment. You know, so this, this idea of so many of us, we have this type of, uh, these tainted relationships because we, we believe a certain thing based off of, again, a limited perception. Again, case in point, in my experience, I thought that my mom did not do enough. She didn't put me in the art school and didn't do this and that. But then somewhere in life, I decided, let me look at this through her lens and see. I was like, dang, it's kind of rough for my mom, kind of. Hey, how did she actually do what she did? You know, and it, my perception started changing. My belief system started changing about who I am, who she is, and the relationship, which, again, it paved the way for, let me not be resentful. Let me step into my power and not blame and attack. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this idea about not just resentment, but, you know, these limiting belief systems that are created and how it, it, it keeps us stuck in, it doesn't allow us to see the divinity in the other. You know, when we think that it's someone else's responsibility to make us whole, we lose. 
the reality is, and this is law as well, is that what you will not give yourself, no one else will give you. Mm. You won't give yourself the money in your bank account to start your new business. Nobody else is going to mm. give it to you either. You're not going to love yourself enough to put yourself in art school. You want somebody else to put you in art school. You, there's a, always an option. There's mm. always an alternative. There's always another way. I have lived that life where the first option, I had very few outside options. The first option was always me. I'm like, can I do this? I think I can do that. And when you do that, there's a level of confidence and of self-assuredness that comes from a failure is not really a failure. It just means that way didn't work. Yeah. It's like, now you know, okay, let me cross that one out. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have to destroy you. Right. It's like, okay, don't, don't, don't go there again or don't yeah. talk to that person or don't do that thing, but let me try the, let me develop enough will and desire to live this life where I have the power to pull in whatever my, my needs are. If I need to make money, if I need to go to school, if I need to have a car, whatever it is. And um, when there's no options, in my situation, there were no options on the board for anyone to go to. So a lot of that was removed. So the, my point of view was very different. Yeah. My point of view was, if you, how are you going to, you know, it was more like whatever the thing was, I didn't have it. <laughs> so whatever it is, I didn't have the resources or the people or the money for it, which was not a bad thing. It just meant that that wasn't on the board. So then what was on the board was if I need to pay a lot of money, that means I need to make a lot of money. Oh, okay, let me go about making a lot of money so I can go pay a lot of money. That was how I navigated it. So if I had to do something that was beyond my means, then I went to how do I increase my means? It wasn't as if there were a, there was a person to go to. Well, so this is a little different than most people because like you say, they have the person to I want you to do this for me. And yes. if you don't, I'm mad at you because I feel like you're supposed to do it. So that was taken out of the equation. So there's this automatic or by default, by default. it's on me. Yeah, by, by default. Reality. Yeah, uh, by default, it's like what you want to do is up, for, up for you to decide. And then, then you start navigating the failures. Then you start like, well, I mean, let me see if I can work five jobs. No, that's, <laughs> that's that Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> one job, two job, three, three job, four job. No, or <laughs> or then you then you know then there's this idea. Well, let me explore what is available for someone in my circumstance. Yeah. And what is available? Who do I need to present myself to? Who will find me engaging enough to support me? You know, where is there a possibility for an inheritance when there is no inheritance in the in the scheme of things? When there is no you know, there's not going to be a will with a million dollars in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, that's off the table. Right. <laughs> that, that's not in the card. I'm not even think about that. <laughs> right, right. So I'm not mad at anybody who's going to, because that's not even in the equation. Yeah. So that's something to think about. A lot of times people are mad because there are things in the equation. So they attach themselves to it and they think they're entitled mm. to it. Ooh. But sometimes, and many of us, there was no uh, ability to be entitled. There was nothing to be entitled to. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it presents a different option. And then the, the uh, desire of the soul challenges you to then do what you say you want to do. So if you want to go to art school, then you figure out how to go to art school. And there's always with the right desire and the right amount of energy, a way to do that. Unless you let something else get in the way, like a lover or a friend or authority or a belief system. Like, well, that's not what people who believe what we believe do. We don't believe in art. So you don't do that, you know. So those are the things that people let stop them. But the solution would be to uh, recognize that you are the fuel. In the, and like the song says, the wind beneath your own wings. <laughs> I'm wearing my wings. 
scarf today. <laughs> so yeah. that the part of the issue is sometimes that we have, we see what other people have and we attach ourselves to it and then we feel resentful when we don't have what they have and that handicaps us because that it never was ours. You know, like I see you got a beautiful house. Maybe I should come in and live there. Well, but you're not invited to come in and live there. <laughs> you know, so, well, maybe I could just visit on an extended time. Like, no, probably not. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you want a house, then maybe you should start with an apartment. Uh, one room and then three rooms and then five rooms and then you have the house you want. Yeah, versus being <laughs> resentful that the other person won't give you <laughs> what they have. You have what they have. Or any, and also a lot of this is, I, um, this is something you brought to my attention, this idea about the trap of nostalgia, remembering what family members and others have or remembering what the family had or the legacies that were in the lineage, then feeling bad because that nostalgic historical event that you don't actually know whether it was true or not is not available to you, you know, or the potential of what could have happened 20 years ago had something else happened that didn't happen. And so now you're in the potential, which is no longer a potential. You know, potential doesn't last forever. So you're in a moment and you could be a movie star, but the moment passed 20 years ago. So now you're not in that moment anymore. That potential doesn't exist the same way. The energy that got you to that point was not seized, nor was it explored and it may not have even been in your path. So the trap of nostalgia is um, debilitating because mm. you're in an illusion. And what has happened? What has happened in the last 20 years? Where is the momentum for whatever the next step is? If you have not cultivated the momentum, you're not ready to produce the next thing that the nostalgia is telling you is the next thing. But it's not because you, you're not building the energy reference point to get yourself to the next thing. I think that really lands in Bill's perspective on the importance of embracing the now, um, like what's in front of me, where am I, and really just letting go of the past. But it, it applies in every situation, whether you're a college student or that you're in high school, it's what, it's not so much, you may, be, you may benefit from an inheritance from your family or from the legacy they have for you. But even if that is the case, at some point, it's gonna come down to you. Yes. And you only have the moments now and each thought that you think that makes your next moment. So if you don't use those moments, then you're effectively needing to cultivate the desire that you want because you may have been in a malaise where you you just weren't asking or building anything so you just built more of the malaise and so here you come now you're waking up and you realize oh i don't have a morphic feel of a future that looks like what my um, nostalgia says so now i'm going to be really disappointed so the the idea is that it's always on you you are always the greatest thing in your experience. It is always happening from what you think in every moment, what your decisions are, what you do every day, what you affirm, what you believe. If you believe others are greater, better, richer, smarter in your universe, that's the truth. But it's not the truth. It's the truth in your limited experience. I want to go one more belief systems we went to go visit our neighbor and uh, it was a funny interaction as it relates to what we do for a living and he had us cracking up because of his sister's response to what we do and um, i really want to take it to the point of what you were saying this the reality that we are being introduced to the idea of off-world intelligence. Well, maybe not we, because we've been on that. However, the world at large, and uh, it's it could be challenging to many old belief systems of the fact, well, not fact, but 
a reality where that does not exist for them, but is being presented. And I think you said like a, a thousand fold. So what's your thoughts on this idea of uh, the, the old belief system that humans are the only ones and accepting the, the greater truth that there is more intelligences, which I mean, if you even look at the different amount of species on the planet, that would tell you something. What do you have for us on that? uh, I'm not in the mode of arguing for the truth. The truth speaks for itself. (laughs) She's like, mic drop. (laughs) I'm I'm really, there are only a few world religions that don't um, have in their documents, in the Old Testament or in all of their documents, spaceships coming from the sky and asking for sacrifices. But you know they'd be like, that that. Part don't count. Old Testament don't count. <laughs> and 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 that and that can be in in if your world can if you can make that jive, like I believe but I don't believe. That's if you like cognitive dissonance to me. <laughs> if you can if you can make that jive, then that you're free to do that. So I'm not here to argue whether there is a life in the universe or whether there's not. There's no argument for me. For me, it's very clear. But what the bigger idea is that in this coming time, in 2024, people are going to be challenged because the thousand fold is going to be 10,000 fold sightings and spaceships and people and whatever your belief system is, and I'm really not here to try to dictate anyone's belief system, will be challenged unless you're open to the fact that there's more going on, that you don't know everything. So... I'm fine with whatever you do know. So do you know everything? If the answer is no, then, then we're good. Because <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know? And there's room for expansion. There's room for growth. We see that in 2024, many different understandings that people have lived and, cult- and cultivated their lives and their families by will be challenged so that there can be a new world. We are living in the time of the deconstruction of one world and for there to be world, we are, those of us who are born, who are, who are designated as world builders have to move beyond the paradigms, beyond, beyond the limitation. It is not an argument. It is not a debate. It's, it's this idea of choosing life. To choose life would be to move away from what it is we the third dimension currently represents the deconstruction of our food, our children, our school systems, our our authority systems, our military, our government. We must be willing to move beyond it or we get to keep it, you you know, and then the free choice universe. If you choose in free choice, that is a choice you may make. I am choosing the divine will that is taking us into another place, and I'm willing to be expanded. We encourage you to be willing to be expanded, too. It's not an argument. All of us can be uh, aligned with truth and freedom that doesn't offend another person because they can't control what you may think. The ability of one of us to grow beyond the other may take all of us into the stratosphere. And I don't think you holding on to what you think will stop progress. I don't think the aliens will stop coming because you don't believe in them. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to stop seeing spaceships in the sky because you don't like it. <laughs> so there is that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just leave it there. <laughs> and uh, if we can jump into some call for the truth okay. as it relates to Letting go of old belief systems that aren't serving us. What's the truth that we need to know that will help us? So these are the call for truth cards that um, give us a, a layered, multidimensional experience of color, numbers, um, sacred geometry by way of the Platonic solids. And today, Tavares will be call will pull a card based on your question is, and then we will share our information with you. So again, asking the question of releasing old, oh, this is good, releasing 
old belief systems that aren't serving our growth and evolution? What's the truth that would help us? And the card theme is frequency. It's associated with third eye, sixth chakra, indigo. And the maxim is change the belief and broadcast the new vibrational equation, which is and feels different and the universe responds. I mean, how... It's so perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it is really. It is really perfect. And we thank you all for joining us. We hope you'll come back and see us again at Call for the Truth. We want to share with you honor, respect, and gratitude. And thank you for joining us. In Lakesh and Veritas, oneness and truth. Thank you.